right, all right. I was just right. calling you to make sure that you weren't going too psycho. I'm glad that you're here. Oh, no, I am. <laughs> I've had a few. Wait, you're not on megaphone. What, Dad? I can barely hear you, dude. So far, my control is okay, though. I heard that. So far. So far. I guess we will. We shall see. Echo. Hopefully, oh, yes. Thank you. Back. Thank you. Thank you. Got an echo there. <laughs> thank it's you very much. Echoing. Ah, well, hello, hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and then welcome to Virtually Live. Um, so, uh, woo. Oh, yes. Johnny has this new toy. That's right. I forgot about his new toy he has. Um, oh, yes, boy. Are you sure all no one's going to forget after today. <laughs> are you in for a <laughs> treat today? <laughs> <laughs> no. So a uh, little info, the uh, video, uh, the streaming and all the video stuff is not working today. So we will uh, we will forego our uh, video action today. And uh, instead, we'll have the uh, fine stylings of uh, Draculus over there on his new toy that he has. Um, everybody, <laughs> welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. Johnny. Do performances and things in here and uh you know just a lot of like plugging in wires and plugging them out and just trying to get uh some more creativity and in, in some of the things i do in here and it's just kind of really fun you know right like my neighbors hear enough of the music now the people <laughs> in the meta can hear the music too so it's quite uh, you know all right all right <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh this is gonna be fun this is gonna be very fun um wow okay well let's uh let's start off with some uh different things here um first thing i wanted to talk about which was um and again just a reminder guys you know these are some of these stories i mean after after the uh the show is over literally that night i begin looking to compile things and everything so actually some of the stuff you know you might have already heard of because it's stuff that i oh my god i've got to put that in for next week so sometimes a little time passes here in about a week before we you know get it up here but uh if you haven't heard already um over at the uh well i should say all over tesla but at the sparks nevada uh warehouse especially uh workers showed up one morning to work and when they're cards which normally just the security guys would look at them well this time they thought it was really weird because they were scanning them and um, a bunch of these were basically these people were waiting for two hours to get their badges scanned and then it turns out that 10 percent of the workforce was turned away because they had been cut they'd been laid off the night before mm. and You're fired! They, didn't, they didn't know until oh, they got their um badges denied and and they stuck them back on some other buses or vans or whatever and sent them on their merry way. Um, uh, engineers, production associates, so many. Yeah, even the uh, the factory in Fremont, uh, they were told there that if their badges didn't work, that they were no longer employed. Um, Sunday night late, they oh sent gosh. out some emails to people. They're calling it restructuring. Um and then their mm -hmm. severance will be handled within 48 hours, all that stuff. Um, that very same day, two executive, uh, executives resigned, two senior VPs. So globally, mm -hmm. more than 140,000 uh, people have lost their jobs, over 3,000 alone at Nevada. And last year, this kind of thing happened to Google, too. So um, mm -hmm. I have you see, this is the thing uh, to show up at work and assume you're working and then suddenly not i mean i had a friend who did show up to the one of the one of the businesses they worked at and the doors were locked and shut and it was just a note saying you know we appreciated you but you know what we can't keep the doors open that's it and no word no nothing so Faye, have you wow. ever experienced had, had any friends that experienced that or, or anything like that no i mean okay mm -hmm. so some of the layoffs when they are not expected yeah it, it can happen that very specific day i do remember mm -hmm. that that happened one time um like with the alt space closure but with uh -huh. the 
a lot of them, they, they do know that it's coming and they're kind of waiting for that email in the morning. But typically it's an email in the morning that comes in, says you're here, you're going to attend a specific meeting and things like that. So, mm, yeah. so these people, they didn't really know even the fact that, you I mean, seriously, I mean, we go to work That's the next harsh. morning every night before we go to work we're not checking our emails right guys i mean come on we're not looking for a work email every night before we go depending especially depending on what our jobs are right so if you're working in a warehouse for a company you are not going to be checking every night to see if you're getting some kind of an email right uh johnny have you experienced or, or known anyone that's experienced something like that well i have a few stories i'll keep them brief oh, uh, i had no, one no. where do tell do tell uh, well this uh, and i'm gonna go with none of these were my fault but anyways um <laughs> What happened was <laughs> I've been in sales for a long time in the telecommunication space and, uh, you know, we're kind of, you know, techie and we all like to have a good time and stuff. And we got a mail, uh, a mail mess or email saying, hey, we're going to send you to a week long sales training and this and that overcoming objections, all kinds of good stuff like that. So it was a week. We got there Sunday night. It was Monday through Friday, like. 8 30 to like 6 we had like an hour of lunch and uh, we were all very like yeah this is not going to be fun but the training was all right and this and that and we get to the last day and it's um it's like friday morning like around 10 o'clock they were doing that well let's wrap up this training what you learned and then they go okay we're gonna separate the room now and we're just looking at each other like okay like more exercises like have we not suffered enough this week and they split up the room <laughs> and they say, OK, if you're on this side of the room, we're going to need you to go to the other room and those can stay. You know, those in this side can stay. And then I was in the one that stayed and they go, if you are in this room, it's because you still have a job. The other people oh. in the other room, their position was eliminated. Oh, so not only did they get yeah. fired, but they stayed there oh, and did a whole God. training a whole week oh. away from their families. And the way they were spending it was, well, you know, it's something that will help you out in your future. So anyways, fast forward to another oh. bunch of layoffs I survived. And my last layoff was this. It was all, okay, guys, get on this quick call. And they always do these fast calls because either A, somebody messed up, or B, someone's about to mess up. So we're like, all right, let's do it. So we jump on this call, and it's only a few people. And at that point, you know, things, sales have been down. It's a declining business, et cetera. And they go, and uh, it's me, a couple other coworkers, and my manager uh, from another team that wasn't on my team. And I'm like, okay, why is my manager not here? And they basically say, again, if you're on this call, unfortunately, your position has been eliminated. Uh, oh. Blah, blah, blah. Here's your, oh you know, pittance of a severance. Wow. Like, I think it was like one week or something. And then oh, it was funny. Okay, it's not funny. I guess I can laugh about it now. But um, the hmm. manager from the other team was like, even me? And then his manager was like, yeah, you too. He's like, I thought I was on here because my employees were get. I didn't know anything about this. And uh, oh. it was just like wool pulled under i mean now i'm doing okay whatever you know i bounce back but it sucked and uh, the worst part yeah. is that it's funny because right after there was the call after the call to everyone that stayed around and said and my manager my direct manager she's a really nice lady she's like hey why are you not on this call i'm like i was on the other call she's like what she's like didn't tell me i'm like yeah oh. i was like so mm. about them linkedin uh recommendations oh, and uh that gosh. was it so but you know wow. what you bounce back but it's like you don't they don't care and, and the, the bad part is is these amazon employees and all these tesla and all the it's the uh, investment in training somebody and getting things done like it's just they need to be more proactive and reactive on these layoffs like this should be something that's mm -hmm. planned a year out it takes so long to get hired and you know accustomed to a company's work environment and mentality why is it so quick to say hey we got to cut budget let's get rid of people they should really plan more on what's going to happen and give a strategy or mm -hmm. something for these people to do because i was one of them so it, it's oh, a horrible man. thing how long had you been at the company at those both of both of those companies at the first well <clears throat> um being that uh i am draculus i am uh you know like several hundred years old so i was happy to be at this company <laughs> for a mere 19 years so oh man <laughs> yes that is insane that's so much time and loyalty you put in right companies oh, don't yeah. care about loyalty anymore they just do not care they're not loyal to the employees well 
and I was it's damn awful. good at what I did. It's just the business couldn't support it anymore. So, but oh, I then man. got a call from two past managers, and I'm, you know, I had jobs thrown at me, mm -hmm. and listen, I'm still working yeah. really hard, and it's not easy. You but a, you a know, there's gig, a though, right? success you, story. You got, an, yes. you got an even better gig, yeah. Yeah. So. So. Wow. Oh, Johnny, that's awful. Has anyone out there ever uh, had this situation happen to them? If you if you can and can talk about it, bounce up and down, or if you know. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I you... was late, so Char? I didn't know the question. <clears throat> oh, that's Sorry. okay. Well, I was talking about it at Tesla. Um, people showed up to work and found that they no longer had jobs. Um, a lot of people, 3,000 at this one at this one plant. And uh, just wow. really, really sad. 140,000 globally. Horrible. Just horrible. Um, Char, what about uh, what about you? What's what's your experience? Oh, it's pretty much the same as Johnny's. You know, you're gonna have this call, and oh, by the way, everybody on the call, you don't have a job anymore. So, oh my God, how long had you been gosh. working at the company you were at? Oh gosh, ten plus years, I'd say. So, <sighs> decent severance, at least. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Listen, everything that you knew and learned, you know, and here's the thing that, that, that gets me. It's like what we talked about last week at the show is the idea of, you know what, retraining your employees. It's cheaper to retrain your current employees than it is to go onboarding a bunch of brand yeah. new ones and do the search for them and the headhunters, all the stuff you've got to you've got to put into it. It just it's just ridiculous. And then mm. and then you think about it, too. And those employees if you retrain them, they also have the history and the memory and knowledge of where the company came from, where it was before. So all mm -hmm. of that is just incredibly important. I just, oh, I just don't understand how, and, how they can be so cool. And there's a real problem too, because think about it, right? When you start at a job, you don't know what the hell you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And then it takes mm -hmm. a while to find out what, like, acclimated. what you're doing and how to do it. And then eventually mm -hmm. comes well should you do this or maybe then you start getting into the mode where you're trying to pioneer new ways to do things that's where you want people and granted right not every employee is going to be amazing right i'm not saying nobody mm -hmm. should get fired they're slackers and you know layabouts all over the place right i'm not saying for that but the person right. who really stuck by the company did what they had to do put the extra mile there's got to be something for people like this you know mm -hmm. you would hope you would hope but it just, you know, it just um, just goes to show you that nothing is safe anymore. You know, a company will will use and abuse you, will take you for what you can bring to the company. And and once they get you, you know, get what they want out of you, they can just throw, kick you to the curb. You You're know, it's fired. Just, it's so, so mean. <laughs> well, it's just no loyalty. It's just frustrating. But see, that's why I want to win the lotto, <laughs> because I have all these plans for all these businesses I'm going to put together and all these amazing, the biggest SPC type of animal rescue in the world, plus all the massive haunts, and I will be hiring all my friends and everybody, <laughs> and like, they'll have jobs forever, and then my little island where I'm going to buy, like, a bunch of houses and a whole island so that, like, I can give houses to people mm. I want to have around me. Purely selfish, <laughs> but, you know, why not? But, uh, no, I think that's that's really a sad situation, but, you know, nonetheless, um, I really wish those people well. I, I, but again, it's not a shocker because they've been letting go of people left and right anyway, especially in tech. Mm -hmm. But um, Tesla's not known for for its subtlety with that. Um, but I do want to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> we haven't heard anything about layoffs from this company, but Kickstarter. They are having uh, one of the people on one of the groups on Kickstarter that is starting a project there. This is really super cool. Um, Johnny had uh, had brought this to my attention. I really enjoy this. Um, <laughs> there is a Slovenian uh, startup company called OZ-IT. OZ-IT, I don't know. I don't want to like, you know, mispronounce it, but um, they have worked for 15 years experience in governmental security and they've got over 20 years experience in software development. <laughs> oh God, I want one of these, but it's just wrong. They have developed a security camera and what this camera does is it fires paintballs at trespassers. Oh my and god. And <laughs> what it will do is is it will you know you'll see it has facial recognition uh, or if you have the app you can literally decide to start firing it firing them at people. Um and what it does is it basically comes up and it says, you know, you are unrecognized, you are a trespasser, you have 5 seconds to to leave and it counts down oh, 5 yeah. seconds. 
<laughs> and if you are not gone by five seconds, it will start firing the paintballs at you, which <laughs> wow. now, so here's, it's, it's twofold, right? Obviously it's a great way to mark people, you know, for the police. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> here's the other option they're, they're talking about that you can have the option of putting tear gas balls in there too like tear gas oh my god and you can fire tear gas at people (laughs) now here's my question i i i mean i there's a part of me that's like yeah because if you're a a bad human you need to get pelted with paintballs at the very least (laughs) if you're going and breaking into a house but what kind of uh liability is this what if you like you know what what happens if it malfunctions I mean, yeah, bro. Or, or what if it hits someone in the eye? You know, well, fun of games. Those are yeah. the You know, and then I mean, you've got that. And then what if you've got like, um, you know, yeah. someone's dropping off a package, you know, or an Uber well, driver or something. Oh, how am I supposed to get my magazines and my solar panels? How am I supposed to get that information? Now? You what need those Walmart solar delivery? panels, man. Oh my goodness. Walmart. De- yeah. Oh yeah. What, what was oh. that? Well. For those of you that are Walmart intrigued delivery. with it, <laughs> it launches tomorrow. So if you guys oh, want to go look that puppy up, it's called the um, Paint Cam. Yeah, the Paint, paint Cam, cam. Uh, camera. Yeah, <laughs> nice. like nice. Paint Cam, but Paint Cam. Yeah, it's kind of cute. Um, but yeah, that's going to be launching tomorrow. Um, and, you know, I'm totally just out of curiosity. I'm just curious what that they're going to be charging for that thing. But uh, <laughs> I really want to see how many uh, how many people send that in because i was thinking about it they're in slovakia right i don't know any situations with that with that particular uh you know country and province and all that but i have to say maybe over there it's okay if you fire things at people projectiles at strangers and you don't get in trouble (laughs) for it i mean it's possible i don't know right i mean you know in the u.s everybody is so litigious and sue happy you know everyone's trying to get a quick dime Mm. that you know, they'll fake a fall. I mean, yep. so, I mean, it's kind of something that I think it's very needed in the U.S. with the crime. But at the same time, it's like, eh, I don't know. I mean, would you it's guys long... be intrigued with something like that? It's as long as it shoots the, the paintball oh and then also shoots a business card from a local lawyer, and then they'll be ready to go. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, my God. That's just insane. Would anybody out there jump up and down if you would uh, if you would actually get this camera? I'm kind of curious if anybody would. Yeah, so don't you, get oh, it, yep, Divine. Okay. Really They're right. gonna mess with your sandwich supplies, <laughs> Divine. Don't get Uh-oh. it. Uh oh. <laughs> now, Jim, I'm curious because how are things in Australia with that? So, like, would you be able to do that safely and legally, or? Um, that I don't. I know, can't make a phone. I hold think. On, hold I on. think. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I don't know, but instead of maybe paintballs, I, I, they could just throw glitter. I mean, what could glitter do? You know what glitter. I mean? They could, you couldn't hurt someone, so why not glitter? Welcome! <laughs> it's time to party! <laughs> <laughs> that would be glitter. something that the homeowner would really regret, though, because they would have glitter oh, everywhere oh, after they that. had to clean up. Oh, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it could be like a super soaker. It could be a super soaker. And how Water, about putting yeah, some, yeah. how about putting some blood in it? <laughs> That's what I put in mine. <laughs> people, people be like, oh my god, I've been shot. It's like, no, peace out, dude. You weren't shot, but I just shot blood. Okay, got your blood. Got you freaked out. I <laughs> got you. That's what you get for breaking in. So I don't know. I, I just think it's insane. Who else out there? Anybody else out there that would get one of these things? Yeah, most people are like, uh, yeah, I don't want to be sued, so I'm not thinking. Nah. It's kind of interesting. I'll take the though, glitter one, say. though. That just sounds fascinating. <laughs> it does, but have fun with that cleanup. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, no. Uh, speaking of legalities, so this is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how, basically, there's that whole deal about how if there's a, like an iPhone that's in evidence in a crime or something and the police can't open it, you know, Apple's not going to help them get into it and all these different mm-hmm. things. And they've got to hire the hackers yeah. to try to break it and all that. Well, uh, there is now a U.S. court ruling that is saying that police can force suspects to unlock their phone with their thumbprint. They are mm-hmm. saying that it's being considered uh, kind of like a blood draw or a fingerprint being taken at booking, you know, when they're being booked. Um, and, you know, in the U.S., the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution has has that in there about the protection from self-incrimination. 
But they're saying that it, this does not apply to all cases, though, in which biometrics are used to unlock electronic devices. I guess it's it's going to be some specific cases. But they say it's like providing a key to a safe um, and that it confirms the ownership and the authentication of the contents, which I think is a little bit of double speak just to kind of, you know, make it sound good. Um, hey, how do, you, yeah. well, how do you feel about that situation, Faye, with the uh, being able to know. unlock things in a crime like that? The- that's a slippery slope because that's entering into a lot of our protections and our privacy. They may need to unlock it for a very specific reason, but what's to stop them from looking throughout everything and invading all of the privacy that they can? I, it mm-hmm. doesn't sound like a good idea. Mm-hmm. No. What about you, Johnny? How do you feel about that? You know, going through your phone, they're going to see all the photos that you've sent into your manly calendar <laughs> that you're trying to be Mr. September for. So, yes, you know. <laughs> they're going to find uh, crummy photography, bad music <laughs> loops. They're probably going to find like me trying to talk to people that message me with the wrong number, I'm talking to a nice lady from California who's a seamstress, and uh, she's very uh, into these dresses. But listen, I'm so torn between this because I'm sort of somebody like, hey, I'm not doing anything wrong. You want to see my phone, see it. But at the same time, it's the privacy issue. I'm torn between, Mm -hmm. I want to have my privacy intact, but also if someone's going to try and blow something up or do something like, oh, like how do you decide what is, what is, what deems somebody cracking into the phone? I really don't have a either or on this. I just hope that things get safer and, uh, it's kind of like when you go to TSA and they scan you with the thing and they can see all your whatnots, oh. right? Oh, like, yeah, that's... I'm okay yeah. with it. You know, like, look, if they're going to be... Now, if I'm being uh, subjected to these scans and, you know, they're, they're mm-hmm. seeing uh, the Dracubod and somebody gets through, now we got problems, <laughs> you know? So you got to hope they're doing their due diligence, right? And, uh, you know, it, it's sort of a little bit that you give up, you know, you give it up and yeah. just in hopes that it's safe. I mean, I don't know that there's any real answer. Like, dare I say, maybe AI should be the one to determine if there's something dangerous or not. And then we look. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There, there's there, maybe technology is the answer. Maybe it's not. But I mean, I assume when I'm going into another country that they're going to look into the phone. I mean, I know when they come yeah. into this country, I watch those shows and. They can look at your mm-hmm. phone if they want to, to see what's going on. And what's yeah. the difference between that and going to the airport? Who knows? Like, it's a legal issue. It's a tech issue. And it's an overall understanding. And, um, you know, these are things that the people that are making the laws don't really understand the technology. And they're out of touch with, with the privacy. So it's a tough issue. I really don't have an answer on that one. But, I mean, if, if, if there's somebody say, hey, we need to, there's, a, there's a serial bomber on board. We need to check your phone to make sure it's not you. Here, take it. Like, you know, I, I don't yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah. that's a unique oh, yeah. scenario. So it's tough. See, I mean, I'd like to hear what the audience says, yeah, but it is this tough, is tough I mean, for me. Well, and I, and I agree. I have to say, I have to point out to you, because see, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little different in terms of that. I, everybody who is, who is, you know, screaming about privacy and this and that and making a big deal. It's like, you know what? chill out man you know what grab a beer because seriously we want to be safe in this we are no longer this is not a world where we can just sit there and walk idly by and relax and think we're going to be safe i mean there are people in the city over here next to me where there is an issue where they're running up to elderly people on the street and they're they're hitting them in the face i mean they're they're doing horrible things to people so here's my thing you know what if there is a phone that's involved in a crime you're damn right you open that you know what? And I saw a lot. I saw a lot of horrible victimage from from crimes that happened when I was at the mortuary. And I'm telling you, the things I saw, I will never forget. And and the pain and the and the horrible, horrible aftermath that the families had to go through from these victims. And my, I was just so angry. I wanted to go out and find out who I wanted to find the people who did this. Right. And it was just mm-hmm. so upsetting who did all these things. And so I am all for it because, you know what, the problem we're finding we're finding, too, is there are always going to be bad apples. Yes, we know that. But the problem is we can't be safe anymore because you also have the fact that there are police officers now that the police forces are going down because police officers are not allowed to do their jobs without fear of, of retribution of being sued for something i mean it's getting really really scary we're how are we going to protect ourselves right i mean because we're not allowed to legally you know to carry right i mean believe me if california Mm -hmm. had an open carry i'd be first in line for that 
because I'm telling you that has saved so many lives when there's been open carry in certain states. And I'm not going to go into a big thing about it with people, but I just look at the statistics and the facts that come out and I say, okay, that's what's going on there. But here's the problem. You're, you know, I'm sitting here, I've spent this past time with my parents. And all I think about is when I take my parents out, when I would take them out somewhere and I have them in a wheelchair or, you know, a slow walker or something, all I'm thinking when I'm, I'm around with them is, oh my God, we're looking like victims. We are perfect victims right now. And there was a time when I could fight and I could handle that situation. But you know what? The body's been kind of beaten up a little bit and it's not what it used to be. So I can't fight the way I used to. I can't protect people the way that I used to. And that makes me nervous and, and a little a little sad. And so if you want to see my phone because it's involved, you, you're worried about it. If you want to see if I have pictures that, that I might have gotten in the background of somebody absolutely take it if if this phone was involved in a crime and found on a victim or a perpetrator take it and open it up it's just like the deal with license plate cams the the city i live in made a big deal about license plate oh we don't want it it's you know it's an invasion of privacy you know what crime has shot up in my my little old city which used to be a nice place because the city next to it is one of the highest crime capitals ever in the, in the united states and they those a lot of those folks are coming over here and I'll tell you something, I am completely 100% for that. Those traffic cams have actually caught people that have been stealing the catalytic converters, that have been stealing the cars, that have oh, been causing good. a lot of, mm-hmm. uh, you know what they go to the stores and they grab a bunch of stuff off the rack and throw them in bags and run out. I mean, and then mm-hmm. also some violent crimes. And they have caught them because of these traffic, uh, what do you call it, license plate cameras. So I think, listen, we are in the we're in the the world where we've we've passed the point of no return. It's not the 50s, 30s, 40s, 50s anymore. You know what? We have to be really understanding that we have to relax on some things now because we need a little more help. And unfortunately, it's a little more Big Brother sometimes, but it has to be, I think, for safety. Um, and what as do you long guys... as it, mm-hmm. as long as it still goes back into uh evidence right you shouldn't be able yeah. to throw somebody in jail it needs to fall under the category of evidence just as like you said surveillance yep. footage or anything like that it's not right. directly go to jail for your sentence they need to look at it as evidence and mm-hmm. if it's looked at as evidence the other part of it is too is that you should have a, a someone who's going to understand that and interpret that so at that point if they're looking mm-hmm. at your phone you should be asking for a lawyer also so now oh, that i'm absolutely. thinking about it i'm like if you if you if you're gonna put this uh, as its evidence then okay you can unlock my phone but with my attorney present and watching it as well maybe that's yeah. something maybe that's the solution because mm-hmm. it is evidence so you hit and it on could, they could you detain that. you that's but they can't charge you 100 mm-hmm. percent a good well, idea I, to do I that i shouldn't say charge but you can't be found guilty on it until you go to court right, right. But that's just here protection yeah, because you, yeah. you again, once that's out of your hands, you don't know. There are not. Listen, I I am in full support of the of the police officers of the world. There are a few bad eggs in there once in a while, and they are the ones that make it difficult for the good police officers to do their mm-hmm. job. So you never know. Mm-hmm. There there are some people who could take that phone in there, and maybe they're not. You know, they're not. They're on the take or whatever. You know, but I did work for a few years for a summit for a law firm, and. When I was there, this is one of the things that came up about it. And the attorneys that I was their personal assistant for, you know, in their office, they were the ones who were saying, yeah, take the phone. They said, don't don't ever say no. Just say, you know, wait until I, I have my attorney present, because they say mm-hmm. that is the worst thing that you could do. And I and I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it if you have an attorney present. That is absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. That is a great way to go. Um, what does anybody in the yeah. audience feel about this? How anybody have a thought on this? Uh, Marty, did you have a thought? Yeah, I do. Um, I don't want to say you're completely fucking wrong, but uh, then don't, I'll just Marty, say... and please don't, please don't swear. <laughs> I, no, uh, hey, we listen, want to hear listen, from you. Listen, guys, guys, heads up. I'm no prude, but we are live streaming, so we never know who's watching. So oh, I'm you guys sorry. Can... That's okay. No I'm, problem, man. And I'm not that's uh, my favorite. Listen, listen, Esquire. That's, that's my favorite. Back, so... That is my favorite swear word. But I just, you know. <laughs> Let's get back to. Uh... Let's get back to I sounded exactly like you after 9-11 when they wanted to do mm-hmm. the Patriot Act. And I was like, you know, if this is what we got to do to prevent this kind of stuff from going on, then I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, here we are 20 years later. It's being used for all the wrong stuff. Like that little bit of freedom yeah. that you're giving up, you are never, ever, ever going to get that back. They're never going to give it up. Right, right. And... um. 
the the thing with the phone like if you get pulled over by the cops or whatever they can ask you to empty out your pockets you know on the hood of your car but they mm-hmm. can't go in the car without your consent and mm-hmm. i i'm not sure exactly what's there but that's that's where my mind goes with the phone discussion and as far as like unlocking your phone on demand um mm-hmm. I see that kind of as emptying out your pockets. And even though, you know, it seems like it's got a scope a little bit bigger than why did you pull me over, officer? Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It still kind of seems like it's not. I don't know. It does seem like it's invading your privacy, but it also seems like it's just emptying out your pockets. So I'm not sure on that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's, that's all I got. I'm sorry. I, sorry, I swore no. on your uh, podcast. No, that's okay. I- no, that's I okay, appreciate that. And uh-huh. when you talk it out, right, it sounds uh-huh. like you're like, uh, uh-huh. like you're torn, like you don't know what to do. And I'm with you exactly. on the Patriot Absolutely. Act. But as a result, uh-huh. you know, I do feel things are somewhat better here. We seem somewhat better, more in tune with like being protected from foreign threats. Now it's the internal mm-hmm. ones. And then you bring up a good point yeah. with the police, right? Empty your pockets, but not the car. And not everybody's comfortable talking to the police and you know like mm-hmm. hey uh, with me i just like i like as soon as the lights go on the car's pulled over and i'm on the ground i'm not messing with it like i'm a weird looking dude and they no, me too. think i'm up to <laughs> and, no good and so i'm always i'm, not taking any I'm always respectful i'm always respectful yeah. to the cops Same. and i always end up going home you know assuming i'm not guilty the thing is you know uh when you're guilty they got you yeah, uh, so assuming you're not uh, guilty. Well, <laughs> you gotta, here's, here's uh... a thought though. Here's something you just said. You're you're always going home assuming you're not guilty. You have to, and this is the thing too. And and again, experiences, right? Everything I saw and heard at the mortuary, a lot of police officers and everything that had happened and things. And here's the thing: you are going home always. But guess what? Right. Police officers don't know if they are. They don't know if that car that they pull over is going to be the last thing they ever see in this lifetime. And you know, they're That's they're true. you never know what's going to happen when you go up to a car and you know or you pull someone over i mean it's it's frightening it is so frightening and i i know some people personally on the police force who um my god from the time i was 11 my friend's dad was a chief and he kept trying to be me he's all from the time i was 11 he's like okay you got to be a cop you got to be a cop and and then my other friend was like come come on and come and be a cop and i was like i'm gonna be a cop i'm gonna be a cop and you know and i was all excited about that and then my niece was born and my sister's like yeah well what if something happened to you and you weren't here for her and i'm like oh come on so i ended up not being a cop Mm. but i have the greatest respect for them and i will say this it is on you we've got to be on the fence about this because you know what there's a lot of good there's a lot of good but yes it's true you do have to be careful i mean i can't go 100 percent this way or 100 percent that way i gotta have my foot on both sides of this line because you know what it depends on the situation and it depends on the people involved there's so many variables but all i know is that i am unable to protect myself and the people i love the way that i used to be able to and because of that I want to know that there is somebody that can help to protect the people I love, you know, because I am no longer able to do it the way that I used to. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. And being in this where I'm at with the crime rising and the scary things that have been happening around here. You know what? I'm pretty I'm pretty nervous about it. So I'm also coming from that aspect of things. You know what I'm saying? Um But no, I I appreciate what you're saying, Marty. That's absolutely true. It does make sense. But the fact that you and Johnny are saying you're weird looking guys, (laughs) come on. Well, look, I look kind of sus. And uh, I think we had another question back there (laughs) from one of our regulars. Ark, did you have a a question, Ark? (laughs) Well, my thought about this was, I mean, that's an internal struggle that, you know, sincere, quote unquote, sincere governments, you know, that's, I know that's an oxymoron, but that you know but sincere people have struggled with you know for countless thousands of years the struggle between secure you know having necessary security and personal liberties and you know all that kind of stuff i mean i that Mm -hmm. is i don't think anyone's gonna argue those things are they have a very complex relationship or disconnect what we Mm -hmm. sometimes take for granted though i mean fighting those two things i don't think something that ever will be you know resolved but what can be is if we put that to the side, because you're never going to get to a point where those things are going to perfectly exist in balance. I don't think that's possible. But what, since that might not be the case, what can be addressed, why do people end up in these positions in the first place where they become you know, criminal and they turn to these kind of things? And that's where I, the energy probably should be more focused on is like create 
getting to the bottom of why people, you know, turn to crime, why they turn to violence, why they turn to these kind of things. Because otherwise, even if we go, you know, with the situation where we, you know, ha for surrender more liberties or, you know, take back more or whatever side we take on this, we're not getting to the thing that's causing the disease. We're just treating the symptom of it. So mm -hmm. commonly what's, mm -hmm. you know, addressed is like, you know, better education systems. Obviously, I mean, it's not a guarded secret that education systems have, you know, kind of plummeted a bit, you know, here in the States. And yeah. also oh, just, yeah. you know, creating the opportunities and the social structures that people need to not fall into certain, you know, things and, you know, have to turn like maybe into gangs where, you know, that's the only place where they get the support they need in order to have mm -hmm. any kind of way to survive. So, I mean, I'm not going to take either side on this because, I mean, again, this is one of those things where somebody can be making this argument and that argument and both be completely right. I mean, that's, that's no, a false course. dichotomy that both people are wrong. Like, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, both arguments be no, flat out right. No, right. So, no, merits both sides. Mm-hmm. So you get where I'm going with that, you know, go to put those aside and look for the what is the deeper systemic, you know, cause of the disease. And we mm -hmm. society should work on treating that. I know that's easier said than well, done, but it, that's just my put that out there and let you guys go yeah. with that. Uh, I like no, no, that. I and thank you so that. much for yeah. saying that. And now let's talk about I'll throw in one kind of side thing and we don't even have to talk about it. But let's talk about how companies these huge companies have more access than than that to your to your phone and have way more access to what you upload for marketing purposes so again let's throw that in there and say hey why can't the law have access yeah it's 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 privacy but then again right we click that checkbox that we didn't read to the disclaimer so we're giving that mm -hmm. uh, to them so it, it, you could go back and forth it's just nuts it's such a fascinating subject it is. And there's no right and wrong. That's the thing, too. There is no right and wrong. Although I, I was just thinking about it. if they did take my phone and I had to open it, I've got all my stuff for the haunt on there. <laughs> I was oh, just you're thinking, getting locked up. I, I they're going to be like, this person's. Like, yeah. Spread them that, on the floor. You're going to have your own Netflix level. show. You would come after me. 100% <laughs> yeah. I would. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god uh kitty do you have a thought <laughs> um i just want to say the um in regards to that i think that i think that it should be like anything else like there should be a warrant because as we know data that is erased is not always truly released uh, erased there are forensics that can get that back but one mm -hmm. thing that i wanted to add um especially after i'm sorry uh marty talked um, marty one thing with mm -hmm. what he was saying about um giving up those freedoms and stuff like that and you're never going to get them back but also um some of the attitudes um whenever th things like that are introduced like the bill he spoke of and like this is people will take this um this uh stand of if you don't have anything to hide why does it matter why do you care right and you, right. it does matter and you should care because you're giving up your own privacy and even if it's because you're checking a box of of a user license agreement that you're not reading like you're you're giving that up and the more and more that you give up the less and less you have and i just think i don't know like we're kind of everyone there's always like the 1984 like big brother stuff right but society yeah. itself with all these cell phones and everything we are also big brother um mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just think the more that we can keep uh, to ourselves, the better. And if you are potentially guilty of something, there might be something on your phone, get a warrant and get the phone. And they have ways of unlocking it. You don't even have to. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if I'm going to plan a crime, it's definitely not going to be on my mobile device. That's for sure. I know, right? <laughs> get a burner. <laughs> you know, it, it's a, it's so crazy when I see on the on some of the things that, well, you know, on their computer, they looked up, you know, how do you find a poison that will, who is stupid enough to go ahead and try and plot <laughs> some murder and leave a freaking electronic trail and not even erase it? Like, like literally it's in your history. Like, what's wrong with you, man? So I just don't understand. I would never cast them in my haunt. That's all I'm saying. Um, okay, well, anybody else have any oh, any sorry. thoughts? Okay, go ahead, D. Oh, I was just gonna say my oldest has asked um, our bot behind me. You know the A word. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, has asked her several times hide how to hide a dead body or bury a dead body or oh. do something to a dead body. Oh, and I'm no. like, you yeah. can't be asking it that. It records <laughs> just... those things. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> and you're going to go back to dad. I'm going to be here with it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So he's all like, yeah. So mom about that car that I, you know, that I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. No, no. I, I hear you. Um, wow. Okay. Does anyone else have anything else they want to add? Um, okay. So the next thing, uh, Next thing I want to talk about is kind of interesting. It's a, a little departure here. Um, I'm actually going to pop over the story I was going to do and go to this one because I think this is interesting. Um, uh, how many of you guys jump up and down? How many have noise canceling headphones? Mm. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can't stand so, them. You know, they are, <laughs> well, they are always good saying, on the obviously, how you have to be Ooh. careful, you know, with loud noises. It's good to have them because for your ears and everything. I know definitely for you because this was for you, this I, I was thinking about too. Um, so the thing that they're saying is that noise canceling headphones can actually alter how your brain processes sound. Mm. And they're saying, of course, with less noise, that can be good. But it, it because of how it affects your brain, and also people complain more about ear pain, nausea, headaches, things like that. And they're mm -hmm. saying that it's it's dangerous because it puts pressure on your eardrum, and your eardrum is uber sensitive. And I will t I will say when uh, the hearing uh, crapped out on me a couple years ago, they gave me injections in my eardrum once a week for six weeks, oh, the most horrifically uh... painful thing in the world, and I couldn't move. They gave me the injections and oh I could gosh. not move. And then I literally had to lay there 20 minutes not moving afterward. Um, it was a living hell. And so let me tell you, that eardrum is sensitive. So if you are putting these noise-canceling uh, headphones on, and we all know how it feels a little weird sometimes. I mean, we, I think we've all felt that kind of pressure, you know, in the past. Yeah. I obviously don't, you know, use them <clears> now. But um, So the thing about it, they're saying, is that... Um, you know, it's 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 not hearing your environment is dangerous because it alters all the neural pathways and that are in your brain. Mm. And there's something called hidden hearing loss, which is basically your brain's inability to process sound, which is a really large part of all this. And wow. they're saying that um, that people start to feel, uh, you know, disoriented. Um, and and as a matter of fact, they had a uh, they did a an experiment and they put people in a soundless environment. And as soon as they did that, after soon after that, people did feel that disorientation. They felt the pressure in their head and their ears. And it was exactly, the, res the results were exactly the same as when they're wearing noise-canceling headphones. And hmm. they, you know, the human body's not made to experience total silence, right? And we react poorly to that, you know, to, to not having any background noise. And it's kind of, they're saying it's a disconnect kind of because, between what you're experiencing and what you're hearing. And it's also very critical to orienting yourself to your environment. Um, and the other thing they mentioned was a 2012 study where they had 17 people put in earplugs. And they had them wear them for one week straight. Okay, one week straight. 11 of the 17 people developed tinnitus, tinnitus, however you want to pronounce that. Um, luckily, they recovered after they got rid of them. But um, but definitely they're saying that you need to be really careful when you're using your um, your uh, noise canceling headphones. Now, mm. Faye, you are not a fan of them. And uh, is this because no it way. affects your headaches or, or tell me how that works with it, you, the nausea? It's the pressure is way too much. Like it just mm. does not feel right. So I have been a person that gets open back headphones for everything, even my little tiny headphones that I'm using here for the for the headset that I have plugged in. Um, they're just resting on my ears. I, I can't have anything that cups my ears. It just feels terrible. You mean, on, can you have, you can't thing. have on ear or over ear <clears throat> either? I, I it, it just, if it, if it's, uh, if it's um, at all canceling the noise in any way or has kind of like a pressure cup, cup okay. that's what I won't do. No. So any, how are you for earbuds? Like, can you use those? Those always bother me after a while. I try not to use earbuds as much as I can. Yeah, I get sore ears. With, I mean, I did. Yeah, I don't wear them ever, you know, for the past couple of years. Um, yeah. But the only thing I'll do is over ear. I won't do anything else um, going forward. I got to protect this guy. But but I remember how every time my ear canal was so tiny and so messed up that, like, I put in ear, earbuds and it'd be like, ow, like, <laughs> like half an hour. Mm. It was right. but Johnny, what about you? How do you feel about noise canceling? Because you must have all oh, kinds of... Oh, man. Uh, well, like where yeah. do I start? So basically, for headphones, I typically go like I have these uh, Sony's. They are noise canceling, but I don't often like using them unless I'm in the airplane. 
Uh, mm. If I'm in the airplane, it's nice because it's that hum of the engine and the ooh, like. Mm. And I like that it cuts out and I hear my music better. But in my days when I was uh, driving the the fire engine, we had to put on those headphones so you could talk, right? Oh, and right. I hated those mm. because they were like these sweat ones, and you felt I've never felt pressure on the headphones, but those were. I bet you I could have gone underwater and my ears would have been dried and and i'm sitting there trying to drive this big apparatus and i can't hear like i like to i like to be able to see hear. like i'm the person i can't drive with a jacket on i can't drive with the window up like unless it's Mm -hmm. freezing right like i like to be in my environment and Mm -hmm. i don't know like i I don't you bring up a good point because i wear a bluetooth uh like a jabra over one ear all day for mm-hmm. work i'm talking all day if you can believe it and then i come on here and i don't shut up either but uh i'm talking <laughs> all day and um now that you mention it when i started this job where i have the headset on all, all day i have been noticing a little bit of that tinnitus so i'm going to switch ears and see if that helps but you bring up mm-hmm. a really good point with the disorienting effect of this it's very similar to when you get your vr legs if you can remember right what you're mm-hmm. seeing mm-hmm. doesn't match up with what your body feels and why right. wouldn't that work with your ears as well in the same way so i think it's very mm-hmm. similar to getting motion sickness in vr well you could get motion sickness from your headphones why wouldn't it work that way you know so i think it's a yeah, valid mm-hmm. thing and i guess everybody has a different uh view but i typically try and go for the cheap heads headphones because mm-hmm. uh you know i i kind of you know if you're djing like you you mess with them you, i'm rough with them yeah. i take them everywhere so i usually yeah. get the cheapies but I do have one nice pair of the, the Sony's that I usually do. But again, yeah, those those give a little pressure too. And then my ear gets a little sore if I'm wearing them all day. But yeah, I don't yeah. know. What does the crowd think? What's their uh, headphone recommendations? Let's yeah, see, we guys, have a bunch what about of you? Uh, Nag- uh, yeah, Nagy, what about you? <clears throat> Your megaphone. Naj? I said Nagy. Sorry, Naj. Are you megaphoned? Can you? Are you muted? Oh, I can't hear you. Are you muted? Nodge, you muted? Oh, no. Just have his psycho-canceling headphones. <laughs> he can't hear you. <laughs> psycho oh, he's Oh, he's going to come back. Okay, uh, uh, D, how about you? He's He uh, is going to come back, I guess. Um. Well, I have a pair of them, but uh, we used them for a little while with AJ because with his autism, uh, he's very sensitive to sounds, like certain mm-hmm. loud sounds. And we mm-hmm. wanted to go to the um, to the uh, the race park or the race the races, you know, that, what, uh-huh. that we have yeah. here because we're weird and we like to see people go around in circles. Um, okay, anyways. I like the track. <laughs> okay. You know, everybody's yeah. there just yeah. for wrecks. But anyways, yeah. Um, <laughs> the food is good. Anyways, we we have it there. Yeah. We have it there, and uh, we went there like maybe two or three times and uh mm-hmm. the second time i think it was he didn't want to use it and so we didn't use it the, se- the third time either so yeah but we used it the first time but he didn't want to use it the second time so he's only wore them maybe mm-hmm. i don't know a few maybe a day or two because he wore them a couple times mm-hmm. before like going to the uh bus stop because there's these store down there that plays loud music like really loud music so yeah he's very sensitive to that so but yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think he likes them because, like, I think it's the, the pressure that, like yeah. you were saying, Faye, I think it's the pressure. And I actually have the headphones that she's wearing right now. Uh, it was a suggestion, and I did end up buying them. Um, Yay. And they're really nice. <laughs> uh, they are really nice headphones. Um, but, yeah, um, I she... like the ones over the ears <laughs> as well. Mm-hmm. But, or like, mm-hmm. um just the ones that like the headphone actually look, you know, over the ears, but in the bigness too. But as long as it lo- it's a loose feeling, like a loose fitting kind of like time, it, it, I have to be able to hear AJ. And sometimes I even have one ear off so, mm-hmm. so I can hear him better. But um, mm-hmm. anyways, um, that's just my parenting. But anyways. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that's, as far that's, as, that's important. As far as um, anything else is like the, the earplugs, oh, I can't do those. I, I can't, I, I don't like sticking things in my ears, so I wouldn't be able to yeah. do those. But yeah, I I, I don't think mm-hmm. the cuffs, the 
the muffs are good for me either. I, I never really tried them. I think I tried them once whenever I was like, oh, we're going to buy these for AJ. And I put them on and I'm just like, okay, nope, too tight. The, <laughs> the bone induction yeah. ones are good too. I have a set of those oh, yeah. that I really like. Those are nice too. Yeah, I those are really nice. I actually got they my dad provide... a... Um... Sorry, sorry. No, I go, just go ahead. have one more thing. I was just mm -hmm. gonna say they do provide a little bit of peace though and like because all the time it's loud around me you know with having aj and stuff like that and even just with me by myself i'm pretty loud i'm a loud y'all know me i'm a loud person but um all the time it's loud and when i put them on it did seem like very peaceful because it was just quiet and i've yeah and it, 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 i don't know but i couldn't see wearing them <laughs> a long period of time you know i couldn't mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, with the with the pressure too, I, I was I got something for my dad. I got him a um, AM FM radio, but it's it's the I guess it's the kind that guys doing jackhammers in the street now. use, I guess, or something. Mm. So it it's not noise canceling, but it is is super tight. And I didn't realize that because um, I'm always on the hunt to find something for dad because he's um, he's blind and almost deaf, and he really he really. Um, He's the prisoner in his own body in a way. And so I try to find things like, as a matter of fact, I'm going to get hope to get Papa Psycho somehow uh, able to hear some of the stuff we do in here so that he can be involved. But, um, but this thing I got to put on there and it is so tight, you guys. And I mean, it's great because you got the AM FM, but I, dad's got a big head. So I always remember that the ball Same. caps would barely even fit him. <laughs> so I think if it's really tight on me, it's not going to work on him, but but I just think anything keeping your ears like that. And I've been, I have to be super careful with the pressure too, because I'm scared to death about, yeah. you know, my ear. And that's why I've, I must have like, I swear to you, I used to be so into the, into the headphones and the, and all, I must have about 20 different kinds of uh, earbuds for your phone and for your music. And then I've got about 30 some odd different uh, cans and stuff. And <laughs> I just don't get to use them anymore. Like I did, floor. you know? Yeah, so mm -hmm. I've got a, I you know what's so stupid is I can't even part with some of them. I'm such an idiot. I'm never going to use them. It's like I've got bows. I got I got some great ones. It's like I really have to part with them because I'm not going to make use of them. But it just kills me. But no, I hear you. D, if those noise canceling ones are not comfortable, um, if they're too too tight on AJ, uh, they do make some that are for for children. You know that are a little a little less constricting from what I I understand too. Yeah, those so maybe. For children. That's probably why oh, they were. So tight on my head. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Then okay. Okay. Yeah. Be careful. All right. Over there. Um, Naj, what about you? You were gonna say something before you uh, disappeared there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Uh, barely. I there you. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I had to close Sorry. the game. It's just I, I found it ironic and uncanny that you were talking about the noise tech canceling technology because earlier today I actually met someone right here in Banter, um, who was talking to me about how. He has become addicted to it. Oh, and he really? actually started to get uh, do the research that you were all talking about um, about getting yourself conditioned uh, <laughs> to wow. uh, hearing with that noise canceling technology and um, wow and everything. Now, personally, I don't use it. Um, mm -hmm. All I'm using right now are just uh, I'm using a pair of Steel Series Arctis One wireless, which use. Uh, a USB dongle mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. closed back like most headsets are but they have these fabric weaved ear cups so they're very comfortable and I can wear them for hours on mm. end and nice. um, and everything and also over the years over the course of my life I have practiced healthy audio tech habits um, my mm. audio volume is always quite low like at, I mean good it's always at around to 20 to, to, to 30 percent volume mm -hmm. and, but when, but depending on the pair of headphones i have to turn it up higher because of the quality of the transducers so right. i have this cheap pair this under this pretty good value pair of bluetooth uh, headphones that are just closed back they're jbl 710 bts and um the build quality is not that great but i mean it's a great value for, uh, for the money when on sale though uh they have leatherette ear cups and um the mm. passive noise cancellation that's built the, the passive noise cancellation from just them being small leather at ear cups is actually quite impressive uh mm. there is no active noise cancellation profile you can activate on the jbl app or anything like that but it doesn't really need it um mm -hmm. but with pairs like that i have to keep it at least 50 for it to be at an acceptable volume uh and i know that's not a problem with my ears because with any other 
you know, pair of headphones or earbuds that I use that are at least half or, or at least, you know, somewhat more decent than that pair. It's like I can have the volume much lower. Um, mm. But I do have a pair of earbuds, though, uh, Soundcore Life P3s that do have active noise cancellation, and I use the medium-sized ear tips. And um, I cannot wear them for that long. Those mm. fall out of my ears. I had those, and they fall out. Do they do the same with you? Or maybe I need to change well, my ear hole or ear whatever. With- the, the, the silicon tip, the, yeah. With, with you can mine. change it. Let me know. I want to change mine. But <laughs> well, with I mine, know, right? it, please with, get me dinner with, first. Okay. With mine, it came with a set of uh, five different, uh, five different silicon ear tips, and the default medium ones worked for me. But um, as long as I follow the directions of putting them in straight and then twisting away from myself, that they stay on pretty good, actually. But in, I think my left ear. Uh, it's like I can't have it on for more than 30 minutes because then I start to get redness and irritation in my ear canal. Yeah. And also the other thing about earbuds, which I hate, is that they cause uh, your body to want to produce excessive amounts of earwax because Mm -hmm. your body, uh, your CNS is detecting that as like a a foreign, as like a threat to your ear canal. That's why we produce, our body produces Mm. earwax. It's like, it's like a, it's a protective film from mm. you know foreign objects and insects and stuff yeah. and yeah actually insects don't like earwax so mm. <laughs> um so that uh, yeah um but yeah but i mean the noise mm-hmm. cancellation of those are, are cool because there's a few different profiles on the app for outdoor and indoor and all that and it, it, it's honestly i can hear a difference where i can hear more of like a deep bass from you know mm-hmm. my body like but then when that's off when it, when the um the passive mode is on it's like it's more like mm-hmm. you know kind of like an open back yeah. pair of headphones or whatever right mm-hmm. um but yeah but it's funny you mentioned that because i was having a lengthy conversation about this with someone <laughs> and uh very topical <laughs> very yeah, topical and, for uh, people i actually i also have a friend that i don't talk to very often but he's all he's bit of a, he's been of an audiophile and he has mm-hmm. many pairs of headphones just like you psycho and we've had lengthy mm-hmm. conversations about that too he has very he has particular tastes and um yeah yeah and mine are all different kinds and uh, yeah. i don't want to let go of them but next time i talk to him i'll talk to him about the whole noise cancellation <laughs> study because you it's quite to. interesting to I me, know. it's like it's sunglasses just, and regular. You you have you different headphones for different applications, and I like my headphones. Mm-hmm. Like I like my VR, uh, my VR headset. I like it to rest on my head, not squeeze my ears in. So that's why it, mine are very loose, but they're sort yeah. of they just just ever so slightly squeeze on my ear. But most of the weight is on the head, just like the headsets, because that way. It's like more centered, but yeah, it, everybody has their own, I guess, views on it. And I, it, my views are, hey, I have different headphones for different functions. And yeah, I don't mind the, yeah. the noise canceling, but I could see how some people it might now it might mess with me. I don't know if I want to yeah. use it now. I, now you're going to be thinking about it. <laughs> I'm yeah. a stereotype of guy. I, I don't really but, use noise um, cancellation. I think, well, and that's, you know, I think it depends on everybody and different comfort levels for people. Um, you know, I mean, we know Faye is very uh, learned in these things and she uses all kinds of stuff and is an early adopter and she does all that kind of stuff. So if they are not comfortable for her and she has to have a special type, I mean, it just shows it's, it's very difficult, you know, for everybody to have the same thing and feel comfortable about it. But yeah. um, everybody but has thank you for sharing different that, bodies. Though. <laughs> yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, now guys, mm-hmm. uh, it is, it is actually time for us to bring this to a close because, uh, We've been having some great conversation, but before we do that, I do have a little bit of movement coming that I got to do. We got to do a little bit of this. We cannot leave unless we, we get a little, bit of, a little bit of a dance. We can't. So let's go ahead and guys, let's close out with this. And I will say thank you for being here. Be good humans. Get on here and be good dancers. Help people this week, however you can. Get over here. Have fun. Thank you for being here, you guys. Oh, come on. Yeah. 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 Come join us on the dance floor, everybody.